would like to talk about the root cubes and root cubes uh, wedge uh, for vegetative propagation. It can be used for a wide variety of crops, floriculture, woody crops, watermelon grafting. So here, um, these, these are the most popular offerings, come as sheets, uh, comes in different densities, different counts, uh, means different propagation densities. The, the density of the foam is same, but the propagation density, what I mean to say is 162 count, 104, 50, and so on. Uh, depending on the size of the plant material, you can use one or the other. And then also, this is the wedge product. Uh, comes in cingulated strips or in trays. Again, you have wide variety of, uh, uh, of, uh, of uh, material that is available, of course, depending on your crop and different, depending on your needs, you can choose one or the other. And of course, you can reach out to your sales rep uh, for exact uh, recommendation for which crop or which uh, plant material you want to which, use, which type of configuration. Okay, crop recommendations. Here, are, so as I said, it can be used for a wide variety of crops, but this is extremely important when you're trying to grow a clean and disease-free disease plant, uh, plant propagation. So if you, are, if you want to consider, uh, you know, if you are uh, looking to do that, for example, for propagation of stock plant uh, production material for mother plants, uh, or for callus production for floricultural crops, uh, the uh, root cubes type of foam is extremely valuable. If you're uh, propagating material uh, that is highly valuable and also you want to uh, grow clean and disease free, of course, this uh, Oasis foam, uh, grower foam, uh, the root cubes foam performs uh, extremely well. And also the other crops that has problems, uh, di uh, difficulty with rooting, or if they're prone to diseases like carnations, clematis, hibiscus, mandevilla, poinsettia, uh, woody crops, several crops. Again, these are some of the uh, uh, crops that do thrive in the foam. As I said, you could do pretty much propagate anything in the foam, but especially if you are looking for to solve these issues, uh, the uh, root cube type of uh, foam is uh, very well recommended. Um, and then also for grafting, rerooting of uh, watermelons, cucumbers, if you're looking at grafting any of those, again, root cubes foam perform extremely well. Um, instructions, you know, the, the I often hear from very, very extremely large scale growers that Oasis propagation media is the propagator's dream uh, media. It's, a, it's And it is absolutely true. It can, uh, it makes the grower's life extremely easy, the propagator's life extremely easy. However, you need to uh, consider proper protocols when you're doing that because I also hear that this is ain't dirt in and it's absolutely right. This is ain't dirt. Uh, so this is a engineered media and when it is shipped to you, it is shipped bone dry. So you got to uh, follow proper protocols to make sure the foam is completely saturated and so on. Okay, fully saturate the foam and we recommend to use complete fertilizer to initially saturate that. Although the foam has starter charge, the root cube foam has starter charge, depending on how your initial watering, you may end up leaching and so on. So in order to make it uh, you know, uh, foolproof, we recommend to water with complete fertilizer, okay? Use it with a hose and a breaker. If you are doing with a hose and a breaker, consider three to four passes to make sure completely everything is saturated, or you can use a conveyor system like it is shown here, or you could use a sub-irrigation followed by overhead watering. Whatever you do, make sure the foam is completely saturated, okay? Uh, and here are some important notes. Never stick a cutting before saturating the foam because the foam is dry. It's bone dry, right? So you never uh, uh, do that. Ensure the foam is 100% saturated without dry pockets. This is cellular foam. Uh, it's not like a peat-based media. You need to ensure, you need to properly water Otherwise, you will end up having dry pockets in the foam. Okay, so if you're dealing with the foam for the first time, when you have to completely saturate it, break open a strip or a sheet to make sure that the foam is totally saturated inside, just to get a feel of that when you're dealing with the first time. Once you establish the water column inside that, then you don't have to follow any special uh, procedures, but the initial watering is extremely important, okay? Uh, if you just let it sit under mist, it's not sufficient enough to saturate the foam. And also, very important thing is the 
excess water that is coming out of the propagation media needs to be drained out. You should never let sit the propagation media in stagnant water. You will end up having lazy roots or delaying the root growth. So you don't want to do that. The excess water needs to be uh, drained out. Okay. Uh, also, never let the foam dry out in, the, uh, in between the propagations of when you dry, let it dry. Like peat-based media, if you let it dry too much, it will not resaturate. The same thing with the foam. Okay. Uh, so that's it uh, on this. Moving on to the next slide. The instructions again for sticking. Again, the foam is like angel cake. You can stick the cutting and then it goes too deep. So make sure that you're sticking properly. When you're dealing with the first time, the thumb rule is that do not stick the cutting more than half the height of the, the foam. If it is two inches, do not stick it deeper than one, one inch because at the very bottom you have a saturation zone like in any media and then it compromises the air water porosity there because it's because of the gravitational pull and the head pressure uh, typically you have that so make sure that you're not sticking half uh, more than half the depth of the foam okay and also make sure you're sticking uh, properly don't stick it too deep don't stick it too on um, towards the side like it like as shown here make sure you're sticking to the center and to the proper height Okay, rooting hormone again, again, uh, depending on your crop, a lot of the uh, the herbaceous woody crops can benefit from using a rooting hormone. Even the plants are uh, very good rooters, all natural. Uh, using a rooting hormone can improve the uniformity and the speed. So you got a again wide variety of crops. IBA and NA are the most commonly used. You can apply as a dip. Uh, or a spray or whatever, but if you have any specific questions on the crop you are growing, definitely reach out to us. But you using uh, rooting hormone definitely can improve the uniformity and the speed of the rooting. Okay, and a uh, very important thing is the misting and the watering. Do not let the cuttings wilt. Okay, that's the key thing. When you're doing vegetative propagation, uh, do not let the cuttings wilt. If the cuttings wilt, Again, you're triggering a lot of hormonal responses in the in the plant material. Maybe they will start yellowing and drop off and all that stuff. Listen to your plant material, okay? So uh, I don't want to give uh, do six minutes of this, six minutes of that, because again, it entirely depends on your propagation facility. If you're doing indoor or outdoor in a greenhouse setting, but make sure the uh, the plant material never uh, wilts. At the same time. Do not overwater because if you're overwatering, you will leach out the nutrients from the the, the plant material. So make sure uh, make sure you're just watering as required. Okay. Uh, so um, and especially when you're propagating indoor, use a uh, or uh, use a dome or some sort of cover to to ensure that the cuttings are not wilting. Okay. And cuttings. Unlike any other propagation media, peat or cocoa based, cuttings do rehydrate extremely fast. You don't have to mist too ex uh, extensively when you're using a foam based media. So you need to uh, make sure uh, you're, uh, you know, you're, you're watching the plants, monitoring the plants, and adjusting the water required, and adjusting the water as required. As I said before, don't, do not water excessively at, as it can promote lazy gro root growth. Heating and venting. Bottom heat uh, can improve the growth, uh, rooting performance, rooting speed. Although even during uh, summer months, uh, because you're misting, uh, the root zone temperature can be low and the metabolic activity will be lower. So if you use a bottom heating, uh, that can improve the uh, the, the speed of uh, uh, the, the the root growth. Okay. Here are some venting and. Uh, you know, main, mainly to maintain the temperature day and night, um, uh, daytime temperature 24 and uh, the vent uh, settings and uh, nighttime temperature at 18 uh, when you're using a bottom heating. And for uh, in an indoor setting, if you're using domes, uh, and make sure that um, the venting is done properly. If there is excessive condensation inside the dome, take the dome out, clean the dome. Otherwise, if there is condensation, the water starts um, uh, dripping and then you will have mold growth and unwanted uh, disease problem inside the in the propagation environment okay this is I'm trying to go very very brief again all these topics are uh, spending worth one hour or two hours because these are all large topics um, lighting lighting is extremely important because uh, for rooting you need carbohydrates you need energy 
okay um, you need to start with low light when you are doing the propagation because the cuttings doesn't have roots they cannot take up water they cannot keep up with the high light you need to start with low light under diffused conditions when they start producing root initials uh, then you can increase the light intensity okay again exactly the same story for for indoor propagation start with low light like fluorescent or LED and then as the starts uh, the plant material starts uh, producing the root initials then you can increase the light intensity okay we talked about this fertilizer uh, make sure you're uh, watering with fertilizer with initial watering and after 10 to uh, 10 after 10 14 days you want to water with fertilizer every three to four irrigations with complete fertilizer using 100 ppm nitrogen okay transplant um, when you're transplanting when you're ready to transplant make sure the foam is fully saturated uh, uh, do not uh, transplant uh, the foam that is half saturated uh, make sure that the foam is fully saturated and transplant into a moist soil okay and the cover the cover the potting mix once you transplant and water thoroughly once you transplant the uh, plant material into uh, into the potting mix and excess food and after that just water as required uh, some people you know sometimes if you see the foam immediately what happens uh, right after transplant the water moves right out of the foam into the surrounding matrix and and people tend to water uh, more frequently. If you do that, you will ha you will create super saturated environment, and then the root growth will be delayed. So so just water as required. Make sure the foam is saturated, and then transplant into uh, moist peat. Water once, and then just water as required. Okay. And as I said before, never let the foam dry out during the course of propagation or when it is ready to transplant. So when you prop, follow the proper protocols, just water as required. Here is a poinsettia plant. After 72 hours, you can see the roots hitting the bottom of the pot, and they grow uh, aggressively out of the foam because the water readily moves out of the foam into the surrounding matrix, and the roots go in search of water and go into the surrounding matrix. Okay, so you help, you will have an aggressive root system if you just water as required. Okay, coming to the next one, storage. Foam should be stored at room temperature in a closed carton. Discoloration of foam can be, uh, may, you may notice that, but it's still good to use as long as the foam is not, uh, when if you're not putting in direct sun, as long as the foam is not turning crispy and it's not saturating, uh, as long as it is not doing that, it is good for propagation um, and no concerns with, uh, you should not be worried about discoloration, okay? And it's not a good practice to store it directly in the greenhouse. Uh, stored in a uh, in a room uh, room temperature and the shelf life should be good for at least one hour. We we typically say that it's good for two years. But again, uh, if you are storing it properly, you should see the shelf life at least good for two years. And with that, I'm done with my first section.